Praise the Lord. I know it's getting late, but I was sitting here reading the scriptures, getting ready to go to bed, and this, for some reason, this was moved upon me to give this teaching. It's 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away into thus dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I come to you, no, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accused, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there is discernments, uh, now there is divisions of gifts, but the Holy Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are divisions of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now when people come to you and they act like they have so much spirit, so much, you know, of the calling, But you see it's saying we had the divisions of the gifts, but the same spirit, that Rukadesh. And there are differences of administrations, but they're from the same Lord. They're of the same Lord. They are divisions of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. Not one is more perfect than the other. Not one person is above the other. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to perfect willing. For to one is given the Spirit of the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. The other, faith by the same Spirit. To the other, the gift of healing by the same Spirit. See, they're not chopped up a bunch of spirits. There's only one, the Ru Kadesh, the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of the living God, Yahweh. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another prophecy, another discerning of spirits, and to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And a lot of people get this so confused in their mind. You got to speak with tongues, or you're not saved, or you can't you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit unless you got the gift of tongues. It is a gift, people. There are people that base their, all their religious beliefs on whether you speak in tongues or not. I'm sort of like Paul. I probably speak in tongues more than any of you, but I do it at home in the closet while I'm praying. And if the Spirit so desires, if there's so much stuff in here that I cannot verbalate to my Father, the Spirit takes over sometimes and speaks to the Father. It's not for show, like some people use it. It's not to build your ego either. But all of this works that one and the self-same spirit dividing to every man servantly as he will. See, the Spirit chooses every person, and He divides this 
gifts out to each person as he wills. Not as we will, but as he wills. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body also is Christ. So by one Spirit we are baptized unto one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Remember that mental wall of partition is broken down. It's no longer Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter. There is no longer Jew or Gentile in God's eyes. We're all one. We need to understand that. Whether we be bond or free, or have been all made to drink unto one spirit. It doesn't matter. One body drinking from the one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many members. See, many make up that one body coming together. I, I tell you people, you just... We don't have power over each other. We, uh, he didn't give you more power than he gave me. He didn't bless you more than he blessed me in the body of Christ. Now, if you stand outside the body and not doing the will, that's a whole different situation. For as... For by one body we are all baptized into one body where we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink unto one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many, many. For if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. So it therefore not of the body if you're a member of that foot down there and you get upset because you're not a member of the hand, you're still part of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I'm not, part, I'm not the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the, he where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? I mean, realistically. That's why we need each other. For we are many in one body. And we can't be jealous of each other's giftings and where we are placed in the body. Each part is as important as the other part. You know, I can't walk without a foot. And I can't reach and grab something without a hand. I can't see if I don't have eyes. I can't hear if I don't have ears. I can't taste and smell if I don't have a nose. The whole body were an eye, were, were the hearing. And if the whole were hearing, were would the smell. But now, with God, set the member, every one of them in the body as it hath pleased him. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are placed in the body of Christ, that body where Christ is ahead. We are set as members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. Not us, but him. He's the planner. He's the work. He's the worker. He's the one that molds and shapes the body. And he puts you where he wants you. He didn't ask for permission. He didn't say, would you like to do this? No, he puts you where it hath pleased him. You should be honored by that. And if there were all one member... Where were the body? But now that there are, but 
Now are they many members, yet one body. That's why we have to walk together. When we move, we got to move together. You know, you can't leave part of yourself dragging out there, okay? If that foot, let right foot of mine said, I ain't going to go this time, and I try to walk off and go somewhere, I can't go unless I drag that thing along with me. But now are they many members, but yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the foot, hand to the foot, I have no need of you. Do you not understand? We have need of each other. We have need to bind together, cohese together. Nay, much more these members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary every part of the body is important and it is needed and these members of the body which we think to be less honorable or upon those we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness so, those that are in the body, that are in this function, we need to cohese with them, because they're important. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacketh. He puts the whole body together. And that part that is lacking, he puts it in there. He, he places it and he pulls it in there. And gives it more honor. That there should be no S-C-H-I-S-M in the body. You know, discord. But that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffers, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members with it, rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particularly. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helps, governments, uh, the divorce of tongues. All are all apostles. Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of a miracle? Miracles? Have all the gift of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, yet show I unto you a more excellent gift. So, these things are given out and portioned out to whom it pleases God to give. All the gifts. Everybody don't have the same gifts. That's the reason why everybody can't speak in tongues. Because everybody, everybody in the body don't have the gift of speaking in tongues. Excuse me. It's there in the Bible. I'm going on down to 13. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity... And that's love. Look it up. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gifts of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I'm nothing.
You can have all these gifts. You can do all of these wonderful works. You know, so many claim, you know, I can heal, I can do this, I can do that. But if you don't have love, it's worth nothing. It's nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. If you don't have love, if you don't do what Yeshua HaMashiach said, to love your neighbors as yourself, to love your enemy, and bless them that curse you. If you don't have love, in your heart. You're nothing. Charity suffers long. Love suffers long. And is kind. Charity, love, envieth not. Charity, love, veineth not itself, is not puffed up. So it doesn't pat itself on the back and go, I am the only one. I am the only prophet. I am the only teacher. I am the only evangelist or apostle. I am. <sighs> Need to get rid of that I am thing, you know, out of your life. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, it is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Ooh, there goes for, to the people that pray curses and, and want evil things to happen to you. That throws that right out the window. Mm. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bearing all things, believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. Charity, love, never faileth. But whether there be prophecy, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man or a woman, I put away with childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as also I am known for now we see through a glass darkly we can't it's like one time I had a dream and I was in this house and it was dark and the windows had you know dirt on there and I was picking away and I was trying to see out and I got a little glimmer and I looked out and I seen this beautiful garden beautiful beyond compare and that's what's called said come to me that verse Barbara you're looking at the Garden of Eden through a glass dimly and then that meaning of that scripture that we look through a dark glass darkly really come to me. I knew then that we can only see things in part. We don't see the whole picture at once. When you're prophesying, many times God will give you pieces, but not the whole picture. But then shall I know, okay, and now abideth faith, hope, charity, love. These things, but the greatest is charity, love, love. For, you know, love 
is really beyond reasoning with God. I mean, he loved us so much. He loved us beyond reasoning to send his own son that we, that we, that we would have everlasting life with him. That is love. That is awesome love. That you would love one another for we are one body, not many bodies, but we as the body of Christ coming together, the bride, the bride. When he was talking about the body, he's talking about the bride coming together, becoming that body of Christ, of Yeshua HaMashiach. Walking in his perfect love. Giving forth his perfect love to others. You know, those that criticize me and others that preach love, you know, it's just amazing it seems like people like to run to people that will teach and preach how bad things are going to happen. And they are. But they, they, in, they, siphon, they just focus upon the judgments of God and on His wrath and upon His anger. Well, yes, he can be angry, and he has wrath, and judgments are upon us. That's true. But yet, that don't vacate the love that he had in John 3, 16. God so loved the world. You can't wipe that out any way you... I mean, you just can't. He did it. Jesus, come. His only begotten Son came down here on this earth, born as a baby, like you were born, like I was born, and grew up. And when he was 33 years old, he hung on a cross and was crucified. He died a cursed death. For it says, anyone that dies on the stake is cursed. He died a cursed death for you and me that we could become one together as one body. We are many members, but we've got to learn to quit your fighting, quit bickering, to quit tearing each other apart and going after each other. We've got to learn to become that body. Isn't enough uh, cults out there trying to tear us apart anyway. A cult that says that they're the only way, that their teaching is the only way, and they don't even teach the true word of God. I mean, you know, everybody focuses on a mighty win a lot. Even I do here lately a few, at least a few times because they're so wrong. And they're leading people into... <sighs> really damnation but I can say the same thing about the Mormons I've been there studied them and they're this they are the same kind of group we're the only way Jehovah Witnesses say, say it we're the only way a lot of Pentecostal holy churches say it we're the only way and you can't get there unless you talk in tongues wrong when you put your gifts above God, then you're not walking the way He wants you to walk in love. That gift that He gives you and puts you in, that part of the body He puts you in, and the gift that He designates to you, 
you are to use for the edification of the whole body. It is not given to you for you alone and your little group, your little clique, you know. I've seen them in churches all over. You have these little cliques sitting, some over there, some over here. Oh, but you can't get them over here to them. And then you have this little group in the middle. Oh, I mean, in the same church, under the same pastor. No. It's time to wake up and become part of that body, that body, that holy body. Of Jesus Christ Yeshua for he's the head and it all comes down to the priesthood that Ellie taught tonight at Nehemiah Center Jesus the head priest the head Kohan we the body the priest that will serve and work under him And we are all placed in this body for a function, a purpose. And we are given a gift to edify the whole body, body in Him. We are to, to serve sacrificial offerings to Him and stand in the gap for other people. We have to set aside ourselves, our pride, our ego trips, and all of our hurts and pains that people have said to us, you know. They'll say something to us and hurt our feelings. Oh my, my feelings are hurt now, Lord. I just can't deal with that person any longer. My feelings is hurt. But they're part of the body. But yet you cannot function with that part of the body because they made an offhand remark or said something they shouldn't have said. Go! You know where it says that if we bring our gift to the altar but we know someone has not against our heart, their heart against us, are we them? We need to go and leave that gift right there at the altar and go. Make amends. Because... It's about the body being glorified for Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. It's about the body growing together and edifying each other in love. Because if we can't love, it doesn't matter. Like Paul said, we can even go burn, give our bodies to be burned. We can give everything we have away to the poor. We can lay everything down. But if we don't have love, we don't have nothing. We've lost it all. Because we have broken his specific commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind and might, with all thy strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. These two cover all the commandments. Then Jesus comes along and says, I say, because you know, the Pharisee says to love your love your neighbor but hate your enemies and he says I say it's like okay well I'm going to tell you a different story here I say to love your enemies love those that persecute you and spitefully use you and bless them don't curse them forgive them and love them Very plain. Jesus didn't stutter when he said it. Nor did God. Love is at the top of their quality. If you cannot love, you cannot expect 
to receive love from God. Your character, what you are in your heart, will be totally revealed on that day of judgment. No hiding. And if there is no love, I don't care how many people you may have laid hands on and they were healed. They weren't healed because of you. They was healed because of God. I don't care how many people you may have fed. If it's not done in love, it's done by works. You're in a heap big trouble. Even if you go out like the poor Muslims do and put a bomb on and go out there and blow yourself up and kill half the people around you to become a martyr, hey, guess what? That's not love. And there's only two places to go. One is into the kingdom of God in heaven or one to hell that will eventually be thrown in the lake of fire. But the glue that holds the whole thing together, all of the gifts, all of the works, all of the callings, all of the things, the one glue that has to be there, you know, if you've got pieces of paper and you're trying to put them together, you need some glue or something to attach them together and they hold that one glue is love if you don't have it you don't have nothing you do not have the spirit of God in you you do not have the glory of God in you and you definitely don't have Jesus blood covering and covenant covering you at that point in your life because the covering is removed. Love is the glue that holds the body together. Because remember, one body, many, many members. And the one glue that holds the body together is love. Father, bless this video. You wanted it to go out tonight for whatever reason. There must be someone out there that needed to hear your words. Father, I send it out with your blessings. Reach out and teach, touch those that need to be touched right now. Let them make the wise decisions Place all anger and bitterness out of their heart. Put that love and that forgiveness into their heart. Let that love overflow through them. That they will become one with the body and become one with you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, bless this video.